Hey, in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started with AG charts for Angular by building a chart that looks just like this. All of the useful links, like the source code, are in the description. So let's get started. First, let's start by creating a new Angular project, which we'll call My App. We'll use CSS and we won't enable server side rendering. Next, we can navigate into the new My App directory and then we can install the AG Charts Angular library, which is what we'll be showing you how to use today. Finally, we can run ng serve, and then we should see the basic Angular template displayed on the right hand side. The next thing to do is start configuring our component. Let's open up the app component that we've just created. The first thing that we want to do is import the AG Charts Angular module into our imports array. We can then declare a single variable which we'll call chart options. This object is going to contain all of the configuration for our chart. That includes things like data, series, as well as some styling options. We can then initialize this within the constructor and we'll leave this object empty for the time being and come back to it in just a moment. Finally, let's replace the template and style URLs with a hard-coded template and return the AG charts angular component making sure to pass through the chart options object that we just created to the options property. And that's it. We should now see the chart displayed within our app on the right hand side, or at least a placeholder. And that's to be expected because we haven't configured anything yet. Navigate back into the chart options object that we created earlier. We're going to start with a very simple property by setting height to 1000 in order to demonstrate how chart options work. Now, when we hit save, we should see that the placeholder for the chart is hard-coded at 1000 pixels. This is the sort of structure we're going to be following throughout this tutorial, where we add additional properties to configure various chart options. Next, let's introduce some data. Here's some that I've prepared earlier, along with the relevant type interface. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll be creating a combination chart that visualizes the correlation between the number of ice cream sales and the average temperature of any given month. A very contrived example we know, but a simple one nonetheless. You'll have probably noticed at this point that even though we've provided data to the chart, nothing's being displayed yet. And that's because we haven't told the chart how we want that data to be displayed. In order to do this, we need to introduce the series property. The series property takes an array of objects where each object refers to one series to be displayed on the chart. Let's start by defining our first series type, which is going to be bar. Next, we can set the X key property as the month. And then finally, we can set the Y key property as ice cream sales. Essentially, what we're doing here is we're telling the chart that we would like to display a single bar series on the chart, where the X key is the month from our data, and then the Y key is the ice cream sales from our data. Now, when we save the chart, we should see a very basic bar chart displayed on the right hand side that plots the number of ice cream sales per month on the Y axis. Now we could just leave this here, but we're going to take things a step further by introducing a secondary series type. So let's do pretty much the same thing that we just did, but this time we'll set the type to line so that we can display a line chart. We'll use the same X key because we want to display it across the month, and then we'll set the Y key as average temperature this time. Now when we hit save, we should be able to see an additional series type plotted on our chart which we can see down here, which is this small orange line. You'll have noticed that the charts also introduced a legend that we can click to toggle this additional series type on and off. So you may be wondering why it looks like the average temperature is just plotted along the bottom of the graph. This isn't the case, but because our data sets are on two completely different scales, it just gives this appearance. So in order to fix this, we need to introduce a secondary axis that we can plot the average temperature line series on so it makes the visual comparison more intuitive. So let's start to do this by introducing the axis property. The axis property takes an array of objects where each object refers to one of the four axes, top, left, bottom, or right. We'll start by configuring the bottom axis by creating a new object and setting the position property to bottom. We'll also set the type property to category. That's because we're displaying the month along the X axis or the bottom axis, which is a categorical data type. Next, we can create another object, this time setting the position as left because we want to configure the left-hand side axis. 
We'll set the type to number because we're going to be displaying numerical data. And then we'll use the keys property to tell the chart that we would like to plot the ice cream sales along this left hand side axis. All that's left to do at this point is rinse and repeat for the final right hand side axis. So we'll update the position to right and then we'll update the keys to average temp. So to recap, we configured the bottom axis to use the month from our data set and then the left and right axes to use the ice cream sales and average temp data from our data set respectively. And as we can see here now, the average temperature is plotted on the secondary right hand side y axis and makes for a much nicer visual comparison. The final part of this tutorial is going to cover styling the chart. Let's start by introducing a title to the chart with the title property. We'll set the text of our title to ice cream sales versus average temperature. Now when we hit save, we should see a nice title appear above the chart. We can then rinse and repeat, do the same thing for the subtitle property, this time setting the text as 2022 data. Now we can see that we have a nicely formatted title and subtitle just above our chart. Next, let's configure the legend using the legend property. In this case, we'll change its position so that it's on the right hand side of the chart rather than underneath it. When we hit save here, we should be able to see that the legend moves from underneath the chart to next to it. Speaking of the legend, wouldn't it be nice if the label that was used didn't take the name directly from our data, but used a more human readable name? We can do this by introducing the Y name property to each of our series. We'll start by setting the Y name of the ice cream sales series. And as we can see, we're now using a nicely formatted label. We can then do the same thing, but for the average temperature series and update the label. And then when we hit save, we can see that we have two nicely formatted legend labels. The last thing that we want to do in this tutorial is format the axes. As you can see at the moment, it's just displaying the data directly as we've provided it to the chart. But if we want to provide some extra context, we can use the labels property to customize this. So let's add the labels property to each of our axes. We'll start with average temp, and then we'll include the formatter property. This property accepts a function, which in turn accepts a single parameter that contains information about those axes. This function can then take the parameter and then return a new value. We'll start by just returning the value from the axes as it is. As you can see, nothing changes in the chart. However, if we then append a string onto the end of this value to indicate that these values are in fact degrees Celsius, we can see that we've now formatted the label on the right hand side axes to make it more human readable. We can then rinse and repeat by copying and pasting our label formatter onto the ice cream sales axis. But this time, rather than appending a string, we'll simply pass it as a float and then format it using the to locale string function in order to make the values appear a little bit nicer. And there we go. You can now see that we have a completely formatted, configured combination chart built in Angular with AG charts in just over 80 lines of code and just under eight and a half minutes. Thank you very much for your time today. We hope you enjoyed the tutorial. We hope you enjoy the product. Until next time, Bye.